you know, you watch the Democrats, they get up there, Letitia James, right? All these kids are, we're going to get them, and we're going to get them, and we're going to go after them, we're going to get them. I was like, okay, this is just a campaign. They're not going to do it, right? No. Here we $430 million. You know, E. Jean Carroll, $83 million. What the fuck is $383 million. And 34 convicted felony. Holy shit. Everything they're, they're saying, they're following with their threats. On the other side, Republicans file a lawsuit, file a lawsuit, file. We're going to get them. Nothing happens, right? Why do you think, if it, whether it's true, Tom, or if it's a reputation and an impression being made that the Dems, they follow through with their threats, the Republicans do not follow through with their threats? Why do you think that reputation is being built today? Well, I don't think the Republicans do much in the way of even threatening. So I don't think there's much they're promising that they need to be held accountable for because they don't really promise to do anything. There's not, oh, we're looking at impeachment. We're considering impeachment. They're not promising to impeach. And, of course, they're not probably going to. Uh, There's an old book title that I like. You can trust the communists to be communists. And, you know, when your enemies tell you what you're going to do, uh, you should pay attention to it, especially if they've got a record of actually pr- following through. And uh, Republicans, or too many Republicans, uh, but the small, the number of Republicans who I think fully understand this is, is disturbingly small, um, engage in a lot of fear-based decision-making. Uh, they don't like scandal politics. They think it's a loser for them politically. Uh, and the target is someone that they don't really like that much, and that's President Trump. And so they were willing to see him abused and punished like no other politician in, in American history has been. And uh, even as he's facing literally going to jail, uh, there's still this muted response to it uh, that to me is inappropriate because I, I think, you know, we've had political prosecutions in the past. I mean, it happens time but we never had this kind of general embrace of targeting a, a candidate or a politician like Trump by the Justice Department and Democratic Party allies in, in Georgia and New York. And uh, w- that's never happened before. And, and it's kind of a brazen attack on the opposition. I mean, these investigations of Trump have led to them investigating the fundraising operations of the Republicans. Uh, in multiple battleground states, they are uh, trying to imprison those who question the election. And uh, if the new rule is that we're going to act like Putin's Russia or or Xi in China, uh, that means the end of the republic, practically speaking. And I and I kind of worry that if it doesn't matter who wins, uh, but unless we right the ship, we'll be kind of a zombie constitutional republic where we've got these kind of oh, yeah, we've got this constitution, we have these alleged civil rights that protect us and due process and all the Bill of Rights, but they're not enforced if you're of the wrong political party or you're outside the narrative that the communist left are pushing. So so let me ask, Rob, we can hear you, by the way, that you're listening to it. It comes to us as well. Yeah, if you can, Lord, a little bit. You know, uh, uh, to me, um, you know how there's forgive and forget, okay? Okay. Let's not. I think the Republican Party uh, forgives, but doesn't forget. But I think the Democratic Party doesn't forgive and doesn't forget. Okay, my opinion. Okay, so on one end, it's kind of like, well, listen, you know, if you get elected, should you go after them for what they did to you? No, we should just let it go, and we should just move on, and we should try to bring the Constitution together. Hopefully, that'll set an example to the other side, to when it comes down to their term, to be. Let's forgive each other and let's move on. Let's make America a better place and let's be more united than divided, right? Like when you think about the, the thing, you know, the election uh, uh, fraud that Jimmy Carter uh, believed that the more, you know, uh, uh, mail-in ballots there is, there's more possibility for fraud. This is many, many years ago that him and Jim Baker, Jim Baker being the guy on the right who was a heavyweight guy. Big, big and time Republican. Mr. Yeah. Republican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I don't, know, I don't know if you read his book, phenomenal book, but I watched... James Comey, before he be, uh, Trump became a convicted felon, they interviewed him. And they said, so, uh, Mr. Comey, do you think, uh, uh, what do you think is going to happen with Trump? You think he's actually, the judge is actually going to you know, come out and, you know, he's going to be a convicted felon? And Comey says, um, yes, I actually think it will. So I'm like, he actually thinks he will. 
Yes, he will. Because at that time, the, the country was 50-50. There's no way they're going to say he's a convicted felon. Boom, Comey was right. Yesterday, Comey's being interviewed by Rob. If you have the clip from the part that I want, I don't know if you have it on the big clip. Play this clip. I want to. Is this the exact same one, Rob, that we showed earlier today? The ver- the shorter version. At the end of it. No, let me go find that. You this know which is, one I'm talking about? I do. This is the first clip that we played where they talk no, about no, no, Trump. No, no, no. I want the one. Got it. The one that you found all the way at the end, where Comey's being asked, "Do you think Trump will go to jail?" Right. And the person asking a question, what's her name every time I forget her Caitlin name? Caitlin Collins. Caitlin Collins. You know who she is. She's the one that yeah, she the yeah. CNN debate. Yeah. And, and Comey's answer wasn't no, wasn't you don't do this. Because when they asked Manchin, Manchin's like, no, there's no way he's going to go to jail. There's no way they're going to sentence him. There's no way they're going to do anything like that. That's just not something to do. Manchin was, there's no way, right? Comey says something else. Rob, if you got to play the clip. Okay, it was a little bit towards the end of it that you had it, Rob. Yeah, a little bit more right around there is when she starts asking and he gives the answer. Play the clip, we'll hear it. Fine that the defendant had acted in contempt of the court's orders on multiple occasions. All of that will be part of the picture that the judge looks at to decide whether a message needs to be sent that involves jail. As a former FBI director, what's it like to to see one of the major nominees of, of one of our parties, the presumptive nominee at this point, be a convicted felon. This isn't it, Rob. Go back if 20 seconds, it, 30 seconds. Mess. I really want to get Tom's feedback here. Played right there. See if it's... I don't know. I would ordinarily say it's unlikely. Go, in a go white back. Cop. 10 seconds. You have it. Okay, right here. She's going to ask a question. Donald Trump, since, you know, I've last seen you on CNN, has now become the first former president to become a convicted felon. There you go. You predicted before the verdict came down as the jury was still deliberating, as the case was still being presented, that that he could potentially be convicted. Do you believe it's likely that the judge will sentence him to jail in this situation? I don't know. I would ordinarily say it's unlikely in a white-collar offense of this sort, but this is a defendant who's begging for a jail term by taking a flamethrower, not just to the judge, but to the entire process and the jury. A judge will take that very seriously into consideration in deciding whether to deter this person and to send a message more broadly, he needs to spend some time behind bars. You think Judge Mershon should take everything he said where, I mean, he he has called Judge Mershon a tyrant. He likened him to the devil every day before he walked into that courtroom. He he said he was corrupt, baselessly. Do you think that the judge will take that into consideration when he does sentence him in a few weeks? I do, as well as him having to find that the defendant had acted in contempt of the court's orders on multiple occasions. All of that will be part of the picture that the judge looks at to decide whether a message needs to be sent that involves jail. Okay, pause it right there. So do you think Trump will be sentenced on July 11th? June 27th is the debate, July 11th is the sentencing, July 15th is the RNC. Do you think he'll be sentenced to jail? I think there's a significant chance that he'll be sentenced, uh, incarcerated in some way, either jailed directly for a short period of time or a longer period of time where his freedom is restricted through, uh, you know, some type of house arrest or something. And you kind of see Comey here, who's a deep state operative, a corrupt former FBI director who was fired, uh, basically putting out the smoke signals for the judge in case the judge isn't getting enough of them that we want you to jail him. And uh, this process is, uh, and I kind of show you the catch-22 Trump is in, we're going to come up with a manufactured crime, deprive you of your due process rights, impose unprecedented gag orders that we know you're going to violate, and then punish you when you complain with jail. Not necessarily for the crimes, but for complaining about the process that led to this unprecedented uh, and compromised for so-called verdict. Uh, it's about as legitimate as the OJ verdict was. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.